Okay guys, I thought I would show you, I'm not gonna do a big video on this, so just one of these small videos. So this is one of the uh, SMX heads. Now, this has come out of the machine, and there is no seats in this yet. We just put the guides in, okay? And it's fully ported, everything is all done, but now I'm putting the seats in. So you know what, I bet you most people don't know how this whole process goes. So, I'm gonna show you. So this is my uh, Rattler seat and guide machine, and this is a seat cutter. So, you have this, you have to uh, indicate in the cylinder head to the machine, and then pilot goes down through the intake valve guide right here, and then locates everything. So this whole head here floats and indicates in, and then when it's all in and centered up, and in the hole, it goes click, click, and it locks in. That's why you hear this little air. You hear that air? So that is actually unlocking and locking it all in place, all together. And then I bore, you can see this one is done. So I just bored this hole. This is what it starts out as. This is done in the CNC machine. This is done here. The reason that we can't do it in the CNC machine down there is that believe it or not, uh, everything getting, you know, putting that in here and then driving uh, guides in and doing everything, it's always a little bit off. And it does a better job of we put all the ho holes in for the guides and then we put the guides in, size of the guides, and then put the seats in based on where exactly the guide is. And I know you would think it would be absolutely perfect, but that's just not the way the real world works. Uh, it is always some little, you know, could be five, six, ten thousandths off. Uh, and like all of them would be off all in one direction or, you know, that doesn't like each one isn't in a different spot. It's they're usually all just slightly off because you got the machine that is turning over, flipping. I mean, there's a lot, so many things going on with five axis stuff that there's some things that it can't do perfect and not rigid. And this is just one of them. So that's why we are uh, doing it on this machine to put the seats in. And then you can verify press, you can do a lot of other things. And we have to intersect seats. And I'll show you that in uh, just a little bit here too. So I'll uh, show you how this just has a single point cutter right there. And I will uh, run this down. Can I try showing you how this all works? Now here's where it's just floating. So everything right now is completely floating. And then come up here and press the... Now everything in the whole entire column, everything is locked. Locked in place. Okay. Start the machine. is as simple as it just starts cutting that hole, that bore, that counter bore. Now, I have my depths all set, and you can see that my vertical position, so I've gone down a little bit, about 9,000, that's about right. And so then I can take it down the exact same dimension, there, 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 there. Then, I'll show you how to indicate in and we cut the exhaust seat into it because you actually cut the exhaust seat into the intake seat. I'll show you that. I'm gonna keep the tool lubricated. This is not a wet machine. Like I said, it's a very uh, designated machine. This is what it does. It'll. It does everything, this entire machine does everything off of where that valve guide is to keep it all concentric with the valve guide. So that's why we are doing everything on here for as far as the seats and uh, obviously the valve job goes. You also cannot valve job on the on a five axis CNC machine. It just doesn't work that way. You could get it close, you could rough it in, 
but it's always, you just can't make it perfect. Concentric. It, it's just, it's not possible. And you can't get a good surface finish on it. It's just, it's a single tool. And I'll show you that when we do start doing a cut and a valve job on this. So this is, this cylinder head here is actually um, one of the first ones that we are 100% in-house. And so I'm going to finish this cylinder head, proof it all out. The other cylinder heads are about 90% done. And then we'll go through and uh, hit the green button and finish up the other ones. So water is all done all through here. Uh, everything is, we believe it's done, but I got to proof this all out. There we go one cut down seat the 400 thousandths now you might also ask you know why don't i just have them made then screw it i'll buy what they have commonly available and i'll make it work i'll make you know i'll modify it and make my own much faster to do it that way okay now if you want to see something really neat now i have this is a block of dry ice so i have this one this is the one i just cut but uh this is interesting move this over the out of the way here a little bit There we go. Watch this and listen. It sits there and vibrates because it's trying to cool down. And as it reaches its temperature, it's probably not trying to, I don't know, do something with the, the gas that it's melting off of there or whatever it is. It stops vibrating. And what I'm trying to do is just trying to get my size down six thousandths which it is not doing I'm getting it down it's shrinking up my the cold is shrinking it up about four thousandths and I probably will just warm up the cylinder head some to uh I just wanted to drop in because I had six thousandths of press on that seat and it's only four thousandths smaller than so that would still give it two thousandths. So I probably will warm up the head just a little bit to make that work. Alright, so I did not warm the head up, but I had the seats down. So it's got about two thousandths of press. I made this special little driver specifically for this. And that is how we put the seat in like just like that looks good now i'm going to go get the other seats and put them in and uh so i put this down on the ground here because i don't ever want to pound on fixtures so my i don't want to pound on the cylinder head even though it's pretty light i don't want to pound on the fixture and it just moves stuff it's unnecessary damage so I just put it down here on this cushion mat so it doesn't doesn't uh, beat it all up. And uh, I'll drive these seats in. Then we'll set it up for the exhaust. All right, so how this works is we put the pilot in here. 
This here is a angle indicator and it reads angle. So I know that uh, there is no angle this direction, front to back, there is no angle. So I have to set the head up at zero. So you put the angle indicator here. And then up here on the screen, you have the angle. And so I get that down to zero. So you see the head turning here. Right there. There, there's zero. And then we turn it to that direction. And it tells me what angle that the, the uh, valve guide is on right here. And then I have to duplicate that in the machine. So now, I put this angle finder back up on the machine. Unlock it. Now I rotate the machine over so I duplicate that angle on the head. So we'll get it there. Come down here, double check it. Yep. Put it back up here. Yep. All right. So it has a four degree cant. You can see it there. And now the head is in line with the valve guide. All right. So now. I'll start setting up my other cutter. This is what the whole mandrel deal looks like in the whole cutter system. So I'll set this cutter up for my proper size seat. Let me go grab a seat. Now these seats are also 500 thick. Grab my indicator, 500, yep. Same thing, I don't want this to be 500. I think I'm gonna make them 400 thick here and because otherwise it, it just starts getting into the short turn radius anyways and you have to cut it off so there's no point doing that and what size is this supposed to be so it's two inch exactly our valve size here is one nine ten so just measure this all up and just double check but they that's what they're, they actually even have the sizes right on it right there. And we're just gonna turn these down and we'll set the tool up on this handy dandy little setting fixture right here. Disregard that. Oh, got little homes there, that's nice. Little dingleberry homes. So this little setting fixture you put so it's a calibrated fixture all right smaller fixture or I'm sorry smaller uh, tool holder right there that goes much smaller got a machine running in the background all right and then Hello. There we go. Or double check my size. So this is a calibrated one inch. We you know for that's precision ground one inch to tenth of a thousandth. Yep. Okay. So that looks good, everything's still set. Always uh, check, check twice, cut once. There is no margin of error on any 
of the things we really do. It's hard enough a lot of times you make mistakes as it is, let alone screwing something up because you didn't measure it a couple times, which happens. So, let's see here. So the setting fixture works just like that. Let's see. And you need to do the same thing. Gonna give this uh, six to seven thousandths of press, which means I need to be at 190. 193 1994 There, tighten everything up. Okay, double check. Yeah, one nine nine three. All right, so let's put the tool up in the machine. Go. Pilot in the tool. Okay. And we'll start right here just for kicks and giggles. Alright, pilot goes in nice. Goes down. Goes to a free floating position. And then the machine locks in place. So that's what you're hearing there, is the locking. I'll zoom this in because you're not going to see, I don't think anybody's ever showing this stuff. It's interesting. If you've never seen how this stuff all works, it just goes in and intersects that. Not by much. You can hear it in the seat because the, the seat's harder than the head and it's just slightly higher very light intersection I'm surprised about that I kind of forgotten where that's at so all right let's see now this is just getting you within a thousandth or so Just keep on cutting this thing. Until we hit 400. And that'll give us a nice uh, flush. Location into the uh, chamber to make it nice. It's like it might end up touching up just a tick with another cutter maybe we'll see 
or uh, it might just go in there with a die grinder. You can see there's like a little, I'm not getting my finger very close, a little burr right in there. My finger is like two inches away, it's just your optical vision. But, uh, keep on going. And then we'll uh, narrow up these seats just the same. Go freeze them on the dry ice and then beat these in. Alright, there we go. Now we're on to the original or what the CNC machine cut, which actually seems to be really, really close. Like I said, it is very close. Sorry, it is very close, but um, how much my arm was blocking at for a long time. Uh, it is very close, but it, you, get, you end up having to do this anyway, so just rough cut them to, to uh, a small size so you can finish just like what we're doing here, and then everything is exactly right. Now, one thing that is uh, people just don't understand, they do not get, is there is a reason why uh, teams freshen up things, especially in NHRA Pro Stock, stuff like that, which is what Fila came out of. Um, this is brand new, brand new cylinder head. After this thing heat cycles, gets all under load, it does move. And things always are better after they're freshened up, which means you run them, you get them, cycle them, you get them hot, you get everything going through it, you come back and you go, oh crap, the seats are out around. Huh, that's weird. No, it's perfectly normal. It's perfectly normal. That's why you actually do freshen ups. You recut the valve job, everything comes in, and that settles in, and it's pretty good from there on out. But that initial runtime, initially, when you come in here and you machine everything in, you cut the valve job, it's brand new, it's never been heat cycled, it's never been put under big load, it moves afterwards. So anybody that has, you know, out of round seats, quote unquote, uh, they don't understand.